And I'm canal boat in LaSalle. I serve as a guide, a deckhand, and a mule tender depending on the day. And I'll be talking about how we tell the story of the canal uh, through experience. So how can we reach young people of the next generation? In this era of technology and instant gratification, it can be difficult to get kids interested in history. So the challenge becomes, how do we get them to put down their phones and take an interest in the world around them? At the INM Canal Boat, we strive to help our tourists experience the history of the canal firsthand rather than just being told about it. In this presentation, I will talk about the canal itself, the boat, and how different aspects of the tours can help bring history to life for our visitors. Now, of course, one of the most important resources that we have is the canal itself, which is naturally the centerpiece of our tours. By being physically present at the canal, our tourists are able to see what the, <clears throat> the travelers, the mule tenders, and the lock tenders would have seen all those years ago. What seeing the canal also accomplishes is giving visitors a sense of how impressive the construction of it really was. Hearing that 5,000 men dug a 96 mile canal by hand is impressive enough, but seeing the results of their labors really drives home how impressive it was and also how difficult and dangerous it could be. Now our boat is called the Volunteer and it is a replica of an 1848 packet boat that is built to scale so it could fit through the locks and aqueducts. Though there are a few modern improvements, visitors are able to get a good sense of what it would have been like to travel on one of these boats to Chicago 160 years ago. Visitors are able to walk all over the boat and sit in the cabin or on the top deck to get a better view. At the back of the boat, the kids are able to talk to the captain and learn how the boat is operated. During the ride, they also get to see how the boat is pulled, docked, and on occasion, how it can get stuck. Now pictured here are our most uh, beloved workers at the canal, our two mules, Mo and Joe. Now while the children may listen to the history with varying degrees of interest, the mules are always the center of attention. The kids really enjoy petting them and also feeding them carrots and the occasional marshmallow. Now the mules also perform the, a very important task of pulling the boat down the canal. For most people, this is the most interesting and the most entertaining aspect of the tours, as many cannot believe that one mule could pull a 25-ton boat all by himself. This drives home how people got around before the times of engines and motors. Like many historical sites, a good interpreter can bring history to life in a way that books and pamphlets just can't. On the boat, we have many interpreters who are both knowledgeable and passionate about the canal, and their presentations are able to keep visitors engaged in the story of the canal. Now, when a lot of people think about history, they tend to think of their school teachers filling their heads with an endless list of names and dates that they're not gonna remember anyway. But history in its essence has always been the story of human beings and their experiences. And the canal is full of these kinds of stories. On the boat, visitors hear many interesting stories, including the life of the Irish workers, Abraham Lincoln's journey home to Springfield, a lock tender's life, and Wild Bill Hickok's supposed fist fight. These stories help visitors connect with these people and remind them that they were actually real people and not just names in a book. All of our crew members are dressed in clothing authentic to the time period. This gives passengers a sense of how people would have looked and how uncomfortable they may have been during the hot summer months, especially the women who had to wear multiple layers even on the hottest summer days. Now at the halfway point of the trip lies an aqueduct that spans over the Little Vermilion River. Though it is not original to uh, the 1848, Passengers are still able to see how the canal was able to bridge over bodies of water. Children are also very entertained by the idea of a boat traveling over a bridge. Now near the dock where we start off is Lock 14, which has been restored to its original appearance. Tourists are able to look at the lock and see how far the water had to raise or drop to allow a boat to pass safely through. They can also imagine how difficult it must have been to operate the heavy wooden doors several times a day. 
Now, this may seem a little odd, but the weather definitely adds to the experience of being on the canal. Especially on hot or rainy days, passengers can imagine how uncomfortable 90 passengers would be jammed packed on a boat, especially when they hear that at night, every door and window was shut up. Though not really about the history, the wildlife of the canal really adds to the experience of the tours, especially for the kids, who are always thrilled to see animals, whether they're fish, turtles, vultures, geese, or snakes. If you ever want to see a boat list to the side, just tell kids that there's a snake in the water. In our modern times, it can be difficult to get people, especially children, interested in the history of a seemingly ordinary thing like a canal. But by striving to give our tourists an experience rather than a lecture, we hope to show them that the canal and the people who worked and traveled on it were not ordinary, but extraordinary.